What's up, everybody? Bryce and Michael here, and today is our weekly chat. How are you guys doing? I'm going to go through here first of all. I don't think I had any questions. I think I had uh, comments, but I didn't have any questions on the last video. We got Baja Flat Out who said, 2612960KB on the Phantom Standard, I believe, mate. Thank you very much, Baja Flat Out. I actually went in and figured that out directly after I got done with the video. So I do appreciate that because I wasn't going to put it on until this next video. And so if anybody had any questions about that that watched the video, uh, definitely thank you for leaving a comment because now everybody pretty much knows. So that's pretty cool. That's what I really like is whenever I'm like, hey, if, if you guys can figure it out, if you guys know, leave a comment and somebody does. That's Snake. Just simply Snake. Nice video. So thank you, Snake. I enjoy making these videos. I ain't going to lie. So I appreciate that you, that you like the video. So... Then Go River Man, who commented on the last one, said, You are hooked big time. I feel the same way. I got the Evolution transmitter just for my racing drone. It's a blast building it. I want to build a flying wing, too. Still haven't got my Mavic yet, and it's probably too cold and stormy to fly it when it gets here. I'm enjoying your channel. I watch the same channels you do. Waiting for the camera and FPV setup. Slow boat from China. Okay. Yes. I'm hooked. I'm hooked as hell. <laughs> I'm the same way. I don't just want to do FPV racing drones, but I want to do the uh, actual camera drones and stuff too. And I found a couple of them online that I really want to try out. Not only the quadcopters, but they've got like a three prop one that I really want to do. It's like supposedly super fast. And I've been told that if you learn how to do the three prop ones, then they're actually really, really fast and real agile. And you can do all sorts of uh, modifications and stuff to it like building your own, your own shell around it and getting it to do all sorts of other things. In fact, a lot of people prefer the, the three-wing when it comes to like industrial type quadcopters and stuff. Like if you guys have seen the new air ambulance thing that they put out, it's a, it's a three-prop drone, so it's, it's pretty cool. They've got a lot of people that are getting into, the, into that. So when it comes to like saving battery and being fast and agile and things like that, and so I really want to get one of those three prongs. It's a little less steady, so we, uh, so if you put a gimbal on it and stuff, that gimbal's going to work its ass off. Like the four prop and up, mainly like the six prop and the eight prop are, are real steady. Your gimbal has to do less work. The, the more props, the steadier it seems to be. I, I was told that the the ones that just have a prop on, e on either side straight across, uh, those are more for like agility. And then you've got the three props here that are more for stability. And then the more that you go up, like the four or five, they've even got one that has eight. That's all keeping it steadier and steadier and steadier, so, so it's tighter turns and things like that. But it's not as fast and not as nimble. So uh, I'm in the same boat. I want to try so many different things out. I want to do the three prop. I want to do a regular camera drone. Uh, that's the four prop. I want to do, they've got a six prop on there that I, that I really want to build. It's, it's a carbon fiber frame for, for six prop that's non-racing. It's just a big drone. And I've been, I've been looking at so many different models because I don't know what I want to do next. I know that I want to build another racing drone. That's the next one on, on the docket. I think I'm going to have two more racing drones. In the, or Then I'm going to move on from the, either, the, either the four or I'm going to do the six, one of the two. I, don't, I, don't, I haven't decided which one that I want to do because that's, that's way on down in the future. Then after I build one of those and put like a 3D gimbal on it and things like that and really put my own GPS and all that different stuff in it and get it up in the air, uh, then I want to move on to the three prop and really kind of design my own shell for it because I've gotten into molding lately, actually. It seems kind of weird, but I have. In fact, I've got, uh, this is how, how much I've gotten into doing molding. I've got the uh, solutions here. You can see the... Uh, Alumi Res A and the Alumi Res B, and you mix these two together and you have a, a plastic uh, base whenever it dries, and it's really fast. It's just 50 50 of either one of them, and then you can build a mold and you put this in it. Uh, and you can even do like a, a swash mold where you, you just make the outside of the mold and then you swash it around and all that different stuff. I figured out how to do the hard molds with the uh, fiberglass and stuff on the outside, and then. Uh, on the inside of it, around the fiberglass, is the silicone, and then you know the space in between, and then you do a slosh mold and stuff. I've been, I, I was, I got these originally because I was going to build a Power Rangers helmet for my son because he wanted one really bad. Uh, and then I used, I don't know if you can tell that much of it so far, and so then I'm going to use the rest of these. This I'm kind of saving it until I can make my own drone mold. You know, I've been taking different ideas and kind of sketching them out. I think I'm going to take this basic one, I'm going to pop the top off, 
and then I'm going to make a mold of this, this top casing here. Uh, and then I'm going to take, once I get the mold done, I'm going to take that mold and I'm going to, I'm going to get some sculpting mold and stuff like that. Uh, some sculpting clay and I'm going to put it on it and do my own like little designs and everything in it. Then I'm going to put silicone and stuff around that mold and make my own mold out of it and then kind of make my own drone. That's, that's the, the idea, but that's like a year or two down the road. That's, that's something that I want to get into probably next year or something like that. That's, it's kind of like, I like to make a list of ideas of things that I want to do and things that I want to accomplish. And being so into this hobby now, especially after building, I'm telling you guys, once you build, you can get out and fly the toy drones all day. You can get out and fly the professional drones all day. But until you build a drone, it's, it's literally, it, it gets your gears running. While you're, while you're soldering and while you're doing things, you're just like, man... I could apply this to this, or I could do this, or I could do that, and you're constantly like thinking of things that you could do. Now that I know how to program it, and it's just not—it's not just as easy as turning on the battery and flipping a switch on the remote. You know, it's not just that; it's everything inside of here. I know what it goes to, what it does, and if it breaks, and I know how to replace it, type of thing. And so, getting into those bigger drones and building one for yourself, and actually putting it together, you're going to know how to how the GPS works on this, you know, so if the GPS goes out on this, I've already seen the modules and messed around with them a little bit, so if the GPS ever goes out on this, in fact, I know how to go in here and, and switch this up and actually uh, get the GPS on this to work for the Russian satellites and the American satellites, uh, because the, the Phantom 3 standard does only gets the American satellites, and it's kind of a bummer because there's a few uh, things, a few of its features that it won't let you do because it doesn't have enough satellites. Uh, but I actually know how to go in here and switch that out, and that's something that I, I, that's another thing that I plan on doing. Like, there's so many things, but it's all got to wait for summertime. It's all got to wait till it's nice outside. But there's, there's a lot of things, the more that I work on these, and the more that I look up that other stuff, you know, how to build the, the A-Prop one, how to build the regular camera drones, and looking at the different uh, gimbals and things like that. I could, I think I figured out how to replace the gimbal on here, which I, you don't need to because the DJI gimbal is probably the best gimbal you're going to get. But if the gimbal ever breaks, I know exactly how to replace it. And but I'm really seriously thinking about going in here, and I gotta I gotta figure out where I want to stop, what I want to stop at, because I don't want to do too much to this. You know, I want to do some mods and things like that, but I don't want to do too much to it. You know, so I I haven't decided if I want to go in there and put the GPS in it because if I'm already going to make my own drone with the 3D gimbal and that has a professional camera and things like that then why would I want to do any of the mods to this and take out parts that already work when I could just put the new parts into a new drone, you know what I mean? And then I have two instead of just one with a whole bunch of other parts set to the side. That's, that's just kind of my, my thought process on it. So yes, Go River Man, I'm very, very, very hooked. And just like you, I can imagine that you want your gears are just turning and working and you're figuring out what you want to build and, and what frames you want to kind of go on and things like that. This isn't even a quarter of, of what I own when it comes to drones. Having all these drones that are already pre-made, this being my first build one, I just want to have, you know, in my new studio that me and my, my buddy are working on, I've got one wall that as soon as it gets done, I want to dedicate it to, you know, all my drones. The drones look better on display, and these toy drones and hobby drones and things like that, you can stick them on the wall and stick them on shelves. I think I might have shelves coming out. I think shelves would look better but I haven't decided, but I want to put all my drones on display. I've got the Tranchla X6. I've been highly debating on, on upgrading and doing some weird, crazy shit too because I've kind of broken it and it, it, I kind of don't want to fix it anymore. So I was actually debating on putting some of these, these racing ESCs and, and motors and stuff inside of it and putting a new flight control board just using the Tranchla X6 uh, because it's, it's big enough and it's got a huge opening for the motors. I could put the, the brushless motors in it, put the ESCs down the arms, and put a new flight control board and everything. And it's got room to fit a, a bigger battery like this. And it's got enough space to put a better camera and stuff on it too, so. I mean, that's just my gears turning, you know. And you guys can tell me about some of your guys' goals and some of the things that you guys would like to do because it's it's just one of those things when you get into the hobby aspect of it, not just the, the buying and flying. If you actually have gotten into the intricate parts of a drone, then that's, that's uh, your gears start turning, you start thinking of other things. So if you, you have any ideas of what you guys want to do. I seen a CMAX-8 video of a guy who upgraded his CMAX-8 like 
freaking crazy. He put brushless motors on it. He put a full working 3D gimbal on it. I mean, he just used the, the frame, and he basically built a DJI Phantom 3 standard with the CMX. And that's what I've been saying for a long time, and I think I even said it at, in, at the first one of these videos, is the SEMA X8 is, is like the toy grade version of the DJI Phantom 3. It's, it's pretty much like the same, same build up, the same body, the same structure and things like that. It just doesn't have as big a legs because it doesn't have as big a gimbal. When it's got the camera underneath, it's pretty much the toy version of this. And so this guy took it. It's the same size and everything. The, the actual shell of it and everything is, is the same size. So he took the brushless motors and put it all in it and flew it up. And it was real steady and it was real cool. And he actually did make a version of the SEMA X8. In fact, it's just called an X8. It's not made by SEMA. It's made by a different company, but it's called an X8. That is the SEMA X8 manufactured, not modified, but manufactured with brushless motors, and that's available now. If you want a brushless drone that's that's kind of a toy-grade drone, I would suggest you get, I think it's called like the Bug or something like that. Uh, it's, it's pretty cool. It's, it's got like a face on the front of it and everything, and I'll put a picture up here. It's got brushless motors. It's, it's very steady. You can put a camera on it and things like that. I think there's some websites that consider it a racing drone, but I don't think it's really a racing drone. I think it's just like a toy grade drone with, with brushless motors on it. Uh, you can go to Quadcopter 101 and check it out too. Uh, and he does a review of it. So, yes, if you're into this hobby, go Riverman if you're into this hobby. Uh, we all watch all the same channels. <laughs> we really do. There's... A, there's there's Tested, there's Flight Tested, there's the RC Sailors, there's Quadcopter 101, Demon Seed. Man, I, if I was to name them all, I would sit here for days trying to figure out, figure out all of them. But uh, when it comes to the technical parts of it, like the internal parts and stuff, I like to watch UAV Futures, and I like to watch uh, uh, Painless, and a few other ones. So anyways, thank you guys for the comments. Definitely leave a comment on next on leave a comment on this video if you guys would like me to comment back to you on the next video and so on and so forth. So today we got the QAB 180 basically done basically. And when I say basically is because I can't get it up into the air yet. I just everything in the flight control board is done. Uh, the engines are mounted and things like that, but bad news, bad news bears. The which one is it? This motor doesn't work right. And there's nothing that I can do about it. So I, I contacted the manufacturer, the person who sold me this motor, and he said, they're just going to send me four new motors. So actually, I'm going to have backup motors and things. And so I should get at least one of those to work, and then we'll be able to put this in the air. And if those don't come in before the 1806s, then I'm just going to put the 1806s on here anyways. Like I've been saying I'm going to do, because the 1806s would be better. And then I'm going to put these ones on a, on a QAV210 or 250. What I want, more than anything, is the Alien 5. And they have this, uh, this drone on eBay that's for $34. It's a frame. It's the same thing as the Alien 5. It, it's called a Martian something or other, I think is what it's called. And so I think that's, that's, that's the one that I'm going to do the 100% build video. No fast forwards, no nothing. If my camera stops because it's full of memory, then I'm going to take it out, put all the, the footage on my computer, you know, stop where I'm at, and then restart again. That's going to be 100% done, and that's, that's going to be ordered here in the next couple weeks. Those aren't going to get these motors on it because that's going to get good parts, really good parts put on it. Uh, conveniently priced parts, but not budget parts. Uh, not extremely expensive parts, but good parts. Like I want to get the, the red bottom motors and uh, some really good 20 amp BSCs, BL Heli, and a really, I'm probably gonna use the same PDB because the PDB is a really good PDB on here. Uh, and then when it comes to the VTX, I'll probably use this VTX because it is a five inch uh, racing drone and this VTX will fit in it better and I'm gonna get a slim VTX to put in here, but I'm gonna get a run cam, an actual, um, Owl run cam to put into that quadcopter. I'm, I'm gonna keep this cheap knockoff run cam in here, uh, and then I'll be getting some. I'll be getting my goggles with that one when it comes in. So I'm, I'm ordering all the parts in one day. I'm ordering all the parts to that in one day, and then I'm waiting till all the parts get here. And then as soon as all the parts get here, then I'm gonna assemble it all together in one. So, and then the 210 will be the one that I do kind of by myself, and I'm not gonna show you guys until it's done. 
and the two tuner where I'm going to put these motors on. Had a little problem I said in, in my last video that I uploaded, uh, I said that I was going to talk a little bit about this. I was going to talk about the firmware on here, but firmware is firmware. Firmware is basically the same thing, whether it goes to a racing drone or whether it goes to a phantom drone. Now, the, the, the commands and stuff that it tells your flight control board couldn't, couldn't be more different, but firmware is firmware. Um, it, it pretty much is loaded the same way. It does all the same things, and, and you've just got to know how to do it. When you're getting a board, when you're getting a flight control board for a racing drone, I make sure that you're not getting the cheapest one online. I made the mistake of doing that because I found a NAS system for really cheap, and I've heard that NAS systems are really, really good systems to have. Since I have found out, since then, since I've ordered it, I've found out that NAS systems are basically just a generic flight control board that several different people make. So a NAS system is just kind of the way that it's set up, uh, the, the parts that are on it and everything, but a ton of people make different NAS systems. Just because I thought NAS was the name brand, and so my, my NAS system was different than a lot of other NAS systems. In fact, I, did, I went through videos and stuff, and I kept seeing people put NAS systems in. People were talking about these are the better NAS. I didn't realize that when you go and get a flight control board, if you're getting a NAS system, make sure that you get a NAS system that's already pre-set up with clean flight or beta flight. Because if you get a NAS system that's just real cheap, that's not already set up for one of them, then it's not going to work. In fact, that's what happened to me. And I went online and I didn't see anybody with any videos on it. And that's probably because nobody's been able to get those particular boards uh, set up on clean flight or anything. Kind of just failed and, and ditched the whole project. I ended up breaking the board out several times. I reboot loaded the board several times and did all sorts of different stuff and I could not get it to work, so I had to travel like an hour away to get a new NAS system. Don't worry, I'm not reshooting a video of uh, putting the pins on and everything. I did a much better job on this one because, like I said, my soldering is way better than, than when I did that. Uh, I just had a better soldering gun doing this. Uh, all the solders are perfect, but it's all done exactly the same way, so you don't have to go re back, go through there. I show you on the last video how I hook up the how I hook up the receiver because the receiver is done different, uh, but that's that's the only difference with this board. This board had a lot less to it and it was it was a lot lighter than the last one. When I bought this one from the guy, the guy told me that it was pre set up with with clean flight on it. And as soon as I got home, the first thing I did was plug it in to make sure that it flashed the firmware and it, it flashed it perfectly. So. Um, it came with a huge manual instructions, a, a huge thing of instructions that actually, I didn't have to get on any videos or recheck anything out um, while setting the rest of it up because it had the whole manual on the whole thing. So it was pretty cool. It was, it was well worth the money. It was, it was probably double the price of the, of the last flight control board, but it was well worth it, completely well worth it. So make sure that you're not, you're not waiting forever on a control board to come in only for it to come in and not work and you have to spend more money anyways. Just go ahead and spend the money. Go to a hobby.com, something or other, you know, go to an actual hobby website and purchase a control board, something that's already set up. The, the control board is your brains. The, the firmware that goes into the control board and everything like that, that's the brain of your whole quadcopter. That's what gets your whole quadcopter to work. So you really don't want to cheap out on it. I seen the NAS system and it was super cheap and so I kind of just did it, you know and shouldn't have learned, now I'm telling you, just make sure that on the control board, on the brains of your quad company, you don't cheap out on it.